Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Natoya and I'm here to help you start budget traveling. So in this video guys, I'm going to tell you how you can travel around Croatia on the cheap cheap. So I've been in Croatia for about six weeks so far and I've traveled to so many different cities. I went from to the south of Croatia and the north of Croatia. I've seen so much of the country and I did it all by traveling on the bus. So traveling by bus is not the most luxurious thing but it's a great way to save money when budget traveling in Croatia. There's so many other things you could spend your money on like yummy foods, uh, tours, budget tours, uh, and activities uh, than to waste money on a rental car. So like I said, I've been in Croatia for six weeks so far. I've went to Split, Zadar, um, Zagreb, Pula, Dubrovnik, which was a total of about five bus rides. And all of my bus rides came up to $135. And do know I was traveling during high season and I did book some of those last minute. So some of those ticket prices are about half the price I paid. So if you're interested in saving a ton of money and stress in Croatia, this video is for you. So before we begin guys, make sure you download the ultimate checklist to book, to book a budget friendly trip in Croatia. It's linked in the description. So first let's talk about why you should consider taking the bus in Croatia from one major city to another. So first of all, it's a lot cheaper to take the bus because you're pretty much doing a ride share and you're in a bus with other tourists and you're splitting the cost. And again, of course, it's definitely cheaper than a rental car because with a rental car, you not only have to pay for the rental car, you have to pay for insurance and gas. And what I love about taking the bus is that the bus drops you right in the city center, which you would probably be staying anyway, and you can easily take a cheap taxi to your Airbnb. So you don't have to worry about getting lost. <laughs> and finally, the number one reason I think you should take the bus in Croatia, and by the way, I, I don't hear anyone talking about this, is that Croatians, they have their own driving rules. And I do not recommend driving in Croatia if you have some kind of driving anxiety because they seem to have their own rules over here on when to go and when to stop. It's just, it just gives me anxiety driving, taking a taxi anywhere in Croatia. And on top of that, the streets are narrow. So there's two way streets in the narrow. It's just a lot. So if you have any kind of driving anxiety, I would recommend you just stick to the bus. Also, since your Airbnb would probably be in the city center or near the city center where you can take a cheap taxi and you can walk anywhere, it doesn't make any sense to have a rental car sitting in the driveway when you're, you'll be walking everywhere. All right guys, so now that I convinced you that taking the buses Croatia is the best option, let's talk about how to book your tickets. So I'll go through an example with you. Let's pretend that you're going to from Split to Dubrovnik on September 30th and we'll find tickets for those days. So I always use Flexi Bus to book my tickets. I find that they're the cheapest, they're reliable, and they just have the most routes. So first thing I do is I go to flexibus.com and I'll do a screen share with you so we could go along with it together. I type in my destination. So for example, split to where we said Dubrovnik on September 9th, I mean 13th. And let's say it's two adults, so I, I type that in, okay? So do note that the earlier you're traveling, the cheaper the tickets usually are, because who wants to get up at like 5 a.m. to take the bus? And then the later, it's usually cheaper, cheap later in the day too, but this happens to be pretty good. So it's about $23 for two people. Let's see how much that is for one person. It's about $11.99 for one person, $12 from Split to Dubrovnik. It's four hours and it's leaving at 10.30. And also it's important to see if it's a direct route to your destination. So I always say in all my videos to be flexible with your dates, but you don't have to worry about being flexible. Having one solid date is fine because the routes are similar every day, all days of the week, and they're about the same price. And of course, ticket prices are more closer to the date. So one thing to note, some flexi buses are partnered with other bus companies in Croatia. So for, so for example, when I was going from Zadar to Pula, it, Flexibus partnered, partnered with a Croatian company, which required us to pay separately for baggage. So you would just click here to see if you would have to pay for baggage. So since there's no note here, I know that baggage is included. So I would go ahead and book and click book one seat or two or three seats for the amount of people that are traveling. 
So of course you would enter your passenger information here. Then you have the option of choosing your seat. So guys, I do ch tend to pay for the seat because people tend to do this thing that's really annoying where they take their bag and put it on the seat and then take over entire rows so there's nowhere to sit. And I'm traveling with my sister and her two kids and we want to sit together so we do tend to pay for seats. So even if you're traveling with one other person, I do recommend paying for a seat so that you guys can guarantee that you're sitting together. So you pick your seat to confirm and do note there is a service fee of $2.25 and then go through with the payment process. So one thing I do want to mention, I forgot to say this before, you have to make sure, well, in, in Croatia, it's very different, but if you use this tip for other cities, other larger cities like um, London or Paris or Berlin, they tend to have so many bus stops. So you have to make sure the bus stop is the best bus stop for you. Like it's close to your Airbnb or it won't be a pain in butt getting to your Airbnb. So you can just look at the map here. So click direct. And then you click on the map of where you're leaving. This is good, where you're leaving. And then where your bus is stopping in your destination. And you can zoom all the way in and know exactly where you're going. So I tend to take Ubers in Croatia because they're so cheap. So I copy the address of the bus stop and the address of my Airbnb and then I see the approximate cost of it and also how far it is from the bus stop. So that's all you have to do to book your ticket with Flexibus. So now let's talk about what you do after you book, you book your ticket and the day of travel. So you have to arrive at least 20 minutes before your bus is meant to depart because you have to find where your bus is located to get it you have to check your baggage and you might have to pay for your baggage. So if you're like me and you're always getting lost, I recommend you get to the bus stop from 20 to 30 minutes before. And don't waste any time trying to figure anything out. Just go straight to the flexi bus counter or just any bus counter and find out where your bus stop is. So like I said, all flexi buses allow free luggage, but if it's a flexi bus partner, you will have to pay 10 kunas for a bag. So make sure you have cash to pay for your luggage. Next, you have to have a mobile pass for your Flexibus. Make sure you download the Flexibus app. These you just show your ticket to the bus driver. He can scan it and you're good to go. Your bus probably won't go directly to the city. It'll make many, it'll make some stops. So just don't be alarmed if your bus stops because they're just stopping to drop off other passengers. And when you're going from Split to Dubrovnik or Dubrovnik to Split, you're passing through Bosnia and Herzegovina. I hope I said that right. So you will have to go to through border control, show your passport. You'll have to get off the bus, show your passports, get your passport stamped. So it's like a whole immigration process. So don't be alarmed. And of course, your driver will announce your bus stop on the loudspeaker. So don't worry, you'll know what's going on. Another thing to note about the Flexi Bus Partners, most of those buses do not have a bathroom. They do make stops for you to have a bathroom break, usually at a gas station or a restaurant so you can so you can have the opportunity to use the bathroom and buy some snacks if you're hungry. Just a quick tip, if you're not going to a major city or you're going to a small town, outside of a major city like we did. We stayed in a city outside of Zadar because it was just cheaper to stay there and then take uh, Uber into Zadar. Make sure that that bus stop is not in the middle of nowhere and you're able to find an Uber to your Airbnb because that's exactly what happened to us. We got off the bus at that small town and we could not find a taxi because it was literally in the middle of nowhere off the highway. So guys, if you're planning on seeing many cities in Croatia, I hope this video helped you and convinced you to take the bus, save lots of money, and to see even more of Croatia through the window of your bus for absolutely free. So before you leave, make sure you watch my video here on eating on a budget in Croatia, and my video here on picking the perfect Airbnb on a budget in Croatia. And all those tips that I'm giving in those videos are meant for all of Croatia. So it doesn't matter if you're going from Dubrovnik, if you're in Dubrovnik, Zagreb, Pula, I've been all over and all those tips will help you. And in the description, I'll link a playlist with all the videos you can use to book a budget-friendly trip to Croatia. Bye.